Howdy y'all, back out here in the shop. And uh, got some news. And I'll show you here in a second. It's kind of a surprise because I didn't take anybody along with me on this part because I wasn't sure if I was actually, uh, sorry, gonna do it. Um, and yes, I had some help. I got lots of family and kids to help me out. But uh, anyways, as I was saying, I, you know, I was, I've been wanting to paint this, okay? And I was gonna do green, that's my plan, right? And I bought these four cans by mistake and it cost me with taxes a hundred like hundred and fifty three dollars for friggin four cans of spray paint when I thought I was getting four packs of three of this specialty stuff and then they refused to take it back because they said it was a dangerous chemical well they mailed it to me and shipped it to me Obviously, it wasn't too dangerous then, and nothing's happened since then, so I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. They were never even taken out of the plastic bag that was wrapped in, that they were wrapped in. But uh, neither here nor there. I ended up trying that green paint on a fender. And after three and a half cans of that four, dot, uh, four cans of spray paint, it would not even cover a fender. After reading through it all, it's a clear green you can see through. And I was just blown away. I was so angry. Literally $150 just thrown in the trash can. I won't make that mistake again. I'll never buy paint online. It's ridiculous. Anyways, so I went to the old good old Wally World because it happened to have been the only thing that was open at that time. And uh, they had three choices. That was it. There was white, which I was like, eh, I really don't want it to be white. White's really common around here because I live in a desert. Everybody's got like white or silver vehicles. They had white, they had black. I didn't want to go black because I already have the Frankenstein that's black. Then they had a weird color. <laughs> All right, gold <laughs> or platinum, I'm sorry. <coughs> it's basically gold and platinum is the same thing. But uh, so I went ahead and I got the, the gold color and there was enough. And come to find out that paint covers super, super good. Three cans did the entire first coat covering everything on the car. And then I ended up using 10 total on it. Just keep going around, putting coat after coat onto it until I had only two cans left that I saved for the hood. And then I went ahead and added a side sticker and a window sticker for the front windshield you know just to, to see what it's gonna look like and I'm thinking it doesn't look too bad I, at first I was like there's no way I'd be so embarrassed to even get in this car you know I'm not a really flaring fancy type of person that would drive a gold or platinum car it's just you give me any old rust bucket and I'll drive it. So, but anyways, it's, it turned out really good actually. And it looks, I ain't going to say it's perfect by any means. There's a couple of runs here and there where my fingers started getting tired and I had to go in and take breaks in the house and come back out. And, but I did get it. I had it all taped off and I just took all the tape off the trim and stuff and and put the stickers on the sides. And I want to show you this. Thinking, you know, it doesn't really look that bad. Let me flip the camera is. Now we back it out. Uh, 
I don't think it looks that bad. You know, of course, I haven't done anything with the trim. I just had it covered. It hasn't been painted or, or the chrome cleaned or anything like that. And oh, the one thing with this is you can see every little bump through the paint. I mean, maybe not on the camera, but in person, up close, you can see every defect, every bump. Like right here, there was a whole bunch of scratches in the paint on his headlight, just blows right out. There's some here on the side that's the same thing. That you didn't know was there with black paint. That was already on here because it kind of covers everything. You don't really notice it. But when you put a shiny color and a lighter color on a car, it re things really stand out. It's a little dusty, but. Yeah, I gotta wait. It's only been 24 hours since I finished painting it. So I have to wait until uh, it cures a little better. Then I can wash it, dry it off with a cloth, and go ahead and and go ahead and get it clear coated because I do have clear coat and I'd like the paint to stay there and not come off um, but and I went up and checked on my sheet metal see how much it's gonna cost me man that stuff is expensive for 18 gauge sheet metal uh, for a 10 foot by 4 foot section it's 140 bucks and it's the only place in town that has anything that size, and that's what I need. Because I gotta make that whole firewall, I gotta cover the trunk, and then I gotta cover these holes in the front wall. And I borrowed a rivet gun for my family. And uh, so I didn't have to go out and buy one. And I'm gonna cut those and rivet them in, just drill small holes with a good drill bit, if I can find a good drill bit in this place and uh, just rivet it in, it's way, way easier. And a rivet gun's light compared to trying to weld it all and sitting for hours, I can't do that. It's killing my back and my knee and my hip. You know, old people crap. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I just wanted to give you this update and I threw in a few still pictures and uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm enjoying this build. I think it's coming along really good. Um, I think after I get the engine bay painted and the inside painted and the sheet metal riveted up, then I will go ahead and spray paint the sheet metal so it doesn't rust and stuff. And, and uh, then I'm gonna start tearing the heads down, porting the heads getting those sandblasted, power washed out, wiped down, uh, and then get those painted and start putting the heads back together, cleaning everything up, you know, as best I can anyways for right now. Getting the block ready to mock up, that's what I gotta do. I need the heads on. I just need the heads, the block, and the transmission, that's it. And so once I get the heads block and the transmission mocked up, then I know where I need to cut, unfortunately, and I may even have to go buy more sheet metal if I don't have enough left. After making the firewall behind the roll cage there that separates the trunk for the fuel cell. And Ooh, coyotes. I thought it was a police siren for a second. Way out here in the country. Man, they're all over the place. They are all over my property. They must be hunting a rabbit. <laughs> they're all over here. Rabbits are. And I gotta keep my dogs in. Cause they are tricky. That one will come up to the fence and yip at them. Even when I'm in the backyard. They'll come right up next to my back fence and there's like high, <coughs> excuse me, not 
uh, cactuses per se, but needle bushes. We call them goat heads around here. Um, <clears throat> and they're all along like the fence lines. And the coyotes would come right up to them and yip at my dogs. And my dogs would run to the fence, you know. And what they do, what the coyotes do, they're smart. They lure the dogs, try and lure them to jump over the fence. And then the whole pack jumps on them and eats them. They are tricky little suckers. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but anyways, back to what we're saying. Um, yeah, I just. Yeah, I'm gonna start on uh, be on the engine block and stuff pretty soon. I just gotta pick up some uh, uh, paint and primer in one black paint for the engine bay and for the inside, so I can get all that red out of there, so it doesn't clash so much. It's not really a word I would use, but I guess I used it. Okay, well, I guess that's all for this video. Just an update video showing you how it's coming along. And uh, when I get ready to tear the heads down and port the heads, I will, you'll be right there with me. All right, y'all. You have a good one.